Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar, hanging out at the Marathon Music Works in Nashville before the sold out show with Kurt Vile and the Violators. I'm with one of the Violators now, Rob. Rob, how you doing? Hey, pretty good. Good, man. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us about your basses and guitars and everything that you're going to show us here in a minute uh, before the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, so thank you. Of course. And let's start right off with the bass because I'm pretty sure you play that probably most of the night, majority of the night, or is it pretty 50-50? It varies. I think now it's maybe like 60-40 in favor <laughs> of the bass. But How do you feel about that? You're okay with that? Oh, yeah. More bass or more guitar? Uh, I mean, I'm probably used to playing. I've, I've logged more guitar hours in my life. But okay. It's fun doing either. Okay. Well, t show us your number one bass. Well, the number one bass at the moment is actually not mine. <laughs> Whose is it? Uh, it belongs to Jesse over All on right. the other side of the stage. Um, they did not bring my number one bass, which lives in, was in Philadelphia. <laughs> Oh, there's Kurt. They said it was an accident. Um, I don't think that was an accident. It seems pretty likely that it was forgotten on purpose to me. But <laughs> anyway, I like this thing a lot. So it's a, I think it's a late '70s P bass. Is that comparable to what you would say your number one left in Philly bass is? is that also a no, P bass? No, that was a BC Rich Mockingbird. It's about as different is that as that you blue can one? get. Yeah. Yeah, the blue one. Okay, I, I recognize that one from the KXP uh, yeah. session you guys did a couple months ago. Yeah, that one will. Uh, yeah, that'll poke your eye out if you're not careful, so <laughs> maybe it's for the best. And do you have a backup bass, or is that the only one? Uh, I use this, this uh, less outrageous BC Rich All right. for, uh, for the, uh, the down-tuned songs, but yeah, it's also the backup, but I haven't had to use it yet. That is there a reason? Tough as nails. Was, did you do that, or is that how you got it? Oh, what? that's how it, how it came. Okay. That's why it was affordable. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually in way worse shape than this when I got it. It's work in, work in progress, but gotcha. it works enough. And to talk about guitars real quick, which ones mm -hmm. are you playing most of the time? Uh, which Les, one would be your number one, I guess? Les Paul is the one that I use the most. And uh, Ooh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got the wrong Bigsby on it, but I prefer it to the, re the right one. What's the right one that should be on there? Uh, I should go all the way oh, down the tailpiece, here. Yeah. But what do you dig, why do you like that versus just the looks, or does it stay in tune better? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a, a visual thing for me, but it stays in tune fine, actually. But uh, yeah, this guitar is tough as nails and has a nice, slightly thicker neck, neck I think. What songs are you using that on? Uh, I use it on Wheelhouse, okay. Jesus Fever, uh, Freak Train. Perfect. But uh, once in a while, I'll mix it up with a... Uh, what came out as the backup guitar, but uh, I don't know. Some nights I, I've actually used it more than the Les Paul via the Gretsch here. How'd you come to own this one? Uh, I just saw it in in New Zealand, and it was oh, wow. uh, the exchange rate was in our favor, so <laughs> it seemed like the right thing to do. Yeah, it's a beauty. Yeah, thanks. And what's the last one there, and all the way in the end? Uh, this is the Bass Six. All right. Um, got this while we were making the the record in LA. Um, used to be the only, not this exact one, but bass sixes are, used to be the only guitar I took out because it could do bass and guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a kind of kind of strange one because it actually says bass six on it, which uh, I've never seen another one that has the bass written on it. Oh, okay, normally it just would have the, the Roman numerals? Yeah, and uh, also it doesn't have a whammy bar, which is actually kind of half the point in owning one, but that's also why I like this one because it has... I was say, do you miss it? Do you feel like you're... You, you know, know, sometimes I do, but I do <laughs> have that one back home right now. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think it's a much nicer piano-y kind of sustain, I think, which uh, makes it kind of unique. And so you won't be selling this one anytime soon? Not, not planning on it. <laughs> you want it? No. I mean, I do. How bad do you it want me? it? <laughs> not that bad. But yeah, I don't really know the full story on this one. Uh, I was told it might be a prototype. I used to think it was fake, but I've since been convinced that it's not. Well, I believe it's real because it's right here in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> it, All right. It's really a real guitar. What songs do you use this on? Uh, right now, Gold Tone. Okay. And uh, sometimes Smoke Ring, but we haven't done that one in a while. And. Uh, it used to be the backup bass, which it actually works okay for. Gotcha. If you if you treat it a certain way. And before we move on to your amps, real quick, mm -hmm. uh, what strings do you prefer on bass and guitar in terms of strings? Or I'm sorry, in terms of gauge and brand. Uh, I keep changing the gauge, uh, but uh, Ernie Ball, except for the the bass six, which is Labella. Gotcha. 
Yeah, I like the, the Labella flat ones on the base six. And what like uh, gauges have you been going back and forth on? Uh, well, yesterday I had 12s on the Gretsch, Ooh. but today I, I tried 10s out once I got the truss rod right. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's nice and zippy now. I bet. And I presume these are your amps sitting right here to my left? Uh, yeah, except the basement, which I'm also borrowing via. Usually I'd be using an SVT, but that's in the shop right now. Oh, oh it just got back. There it is. <laughs> Hot dog. This actually sounds pretty good, the backups. So uh, I think our, our sound guy wants us to use it, but we'll, we'll see what happens. And the Marshall is? Yeah, that's a uh, 70s. It, it was born as a super bass, but it's been converted to lead. Is that something you did? No, I was told that in, back then they couldn't sell super basses, so I went back to the factory and came back as a super lead so they could sell it. But uh, <laughs> and there's no way I can prove that. Just what I was told. I'll believe you. All right, well, I want to talk about pedals. Can, can we, we do it? that? Yeah. All right. All right, Rob, mm -hmm. we're over here on one of your stomp stations. So talk to me about your uh, base area here. Yeah, so these are uh, the, the seldom used base pedals. But uh, you know, so, uh, this one right here, this is a uh, most hated tuner in uh, the recording studio. Why is that? Because, uh, I mean, when I'm working with bands, like as an engineer, uh, I'll make them use it just because it's, it's super accurate. But you can never really, unless it's like a sine wave synthesizer, you can never really get the, uh, the display to totally flatten out, which is what you ideally want. <laughs> so you're, but, you're kind of in tune. Yeah, but it's close enough. But I don't know, I like, uh, I like it on having it around so you can you know, work on guitars pretty accurately and see if you're in tune while you're playing. Yeah. And then uh, this, this Big Muff, our uh, friend of ours who works in a guitar shop in Philly recommended that, so took his word for it. What kind of muff is it? Um, is it basic audio? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I have it on a triangle setting now, which is pretty nice for bass, I think. Uh, what setting, or what setting, what songs would you kick that, what songs are you kicking that on? Uh, Hunchback and the, uh, the Bruce Springsteen tune, uh, usually, but it's nice because it has a mid control, okay. which, I mean, I like, I like regular big muffs, but that's a nice, nice feature. I know Kyle likes it, our drummer, who hates big muffs. <laughs> that one's okay with him for that reason. And then uh, the nice people at Moog uh, helped us out with these. The, um, the boost is really just just to level ba different bases. Okay. It's uh, don't actually use it to, for more bass. <laughs> just so everything comes out the speakers the same. And then uh, the delay is for, for like the uh, the fake harp parts on on tour. Oh, okay. That's the only song where the bass six kind of goes between an actual bass and a guitar within the same song. And I imagine with the radial DI, that's just so the front of house is a clean signal. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes I'll use it in the monitors too. But. Okay. Cool. Well, let's check out your guitar pedals. All right. All right. Now we're in your guitar area. Tell me about what's going on here. Uh, here, I used to carry a bunch of kind of wild pedals with a big, big pedal board. But yeah. I, I don't know. I've, I've decided to simplify, and I'm really happy I did. Just with the little boss thing that you can carry on on yeah. flight. Yeah makes it easy for traveling. Yeah, and it's easy to swap stuff out once in a while, but it's been more or less like this for a while now. Um, yeah, just like the the, uh, the volume pedal. Gotcha. Really just as a, uh, I don't use it as an effect so much, it's just in case like the Ebo gets a little too out of hand. <laughs> Rang it back in. Yeah, and then uh, the Ibanez Wah Wah, that's been my favorite since I was a kid. Really? I was really bummed the day that, that it snapped in half. And then, Luckily found one on tour recently, somewhere really, really unusual. Um, New Zealand, like your, uh, when you're, your no, It's like a smaller town in Germany, I think. Oh, okay. And then, uh, let's see what else. Oh, the diamond compressor. Yeah, that, that's also an Ebo regulator. <laughs> it also sounds nice on the 12 string when I okay. do that once in a while. Kurt lets me borrow his now. Oh, all right. So, and then, uh, that's a fake super fuzz that Jesse, the other guitar player made. Okay which uh, also has a, has a mid-adjustable mid-range that's nice. 
Is it like an exact clone, or is it something that he just Ooh. took took off that? Or I can ask Jesse in a minute. Ask him, I'll ask Jesse in a minute. I mean, I have an old one, and it sounds like it to me. Okay. So. Except this one's a lot quieter in a good way. And then what else? Uh, have a Klon Centaur clone. Um, it's probably a lot cheaper <laughs> than the original one. Yeah, well, so I I lived in Boston when they were making the first run. And oh, I right. actually worked with people who worked for that guy. Bill, I think, yeah, Bill Finnegan's his yeah, name. Yeah, like, yeah, we can get you one at a discount. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's still too expensive, $200. Which Jeez. back then was. Yeah, back then, totally. But, uh, I don't know, that's, if I could do that differently, I would. <laughs> you would have taken a couple, I bet. Yeah. And then, uh, what else, a couple, a couple way, way, huge, way huge delays. Yeah, how are you using those differently, you know, uh, this Aqua one's, and Super Plus? This one's just for uh, more kind of like the modulation in the... Okay. The Aqua Plus is the one that I use most of the time. Like your standard delay? Yeah, I used to use a Memory Man and that's actually a pretty good replacement, Okay. I think. And uh, a lot smaller, doesn't have the wacky AC cable. And then the, Mo the Moog Trem I like quite a bit. Can get a do you use that kind of as a flavor, or, is that, or do you have it pretty set where it's, you know, when you kick it on, people know you're using trim, or is it pretty much, is it some yeah, I, dude? I like to keep it pretty dramatic. Yeah. Is there a particular songs you're kicking on? Mm, I use it on Jesus Fever for a second, and then that's, that's uh, maybe just for a chord here and there when the mood strikes me on other songs. <laughs> Thicken things up? Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us about all your stuff here, bass and guitar related things. Oh, and thank we'll talk you. to the other guys here in a minute. Good times. Thank you. All right, everyone, now we're with the other multi instrumentalist and also pedal builder, which we'll get to in a moment. Jesse, Jesse, how are you doing? I'm all right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you for taking the time to uh, talk to us about all your gear. And speaking of gear, I want to know about your strat here, the number one. Oh, this is it. Uh, this is a 57 reissue, American reissue, Stratocaster, stock with the exception of a Antiquity 2 pickup in the middle position, which uh, allows me to have hum canceling in the two and uh, four positions. How long yeah. have you had this one? Um, I've had it since the uh, smoke ring for my Halo tour. I oh, wow. purchased it from Craigslist. It was the most that I'd ever spent on an instrument, and uh, it's one of the most reliable and uh, uh, definitely a favorite uh, guitar in my collection. Would you say you use that one probably the most? Uh, Between that and the telly? I use it on all of the old songs because that's where the vibe was. It okay. was about a whammy bar, it was about a strat, um, but I'm sort of enamored with tellies as of late, so a lot of the newer material I play uh, the Telecaster. This is the Telecaster and, in question. Uh, this is a 1974 uh, Fender Telecaster, black, little beat, but uh, I love it. I love the neck. Um, I love the sound of the bridge pickup. I've uh, augmented it with Callaham saddles so I can get it intonated. And um, other than that, it's uh, pretty stock. Uh, I purchased it and the uh, neck pickup was dead. So that's an antiquity uh, Seymour Duncan neck pickup, but it's awesome. And uh, it's very lightweight for a 70s uh, oh, yeah. Fender. It's I think under eight pounds, yeah, so I, would say. I lucked out. And how'd you get this one? Um, my buddy uh, Eric from Society Hill Loan in Philadelphia uh, told me that his uh, high school pal, you know, was getting rid of some gear and uh, he knew I was looking for a good telly and uh, it worked out great. Cool. Lifelong friend. And uh, the bass, talk to, talk to us about this one, Jerry Jones. Uh, yeah, I've been um, obsessed with these weird things forever and uh, every time I come to Nashville I'd go to Gruen Guitars and ask if they had any uh, Jerry Jones and they just told me no one gets rid of them. Interestingly enough, uh, there's two of them right um, at the shop today. but. <laughs> I was uh, touring uh, on this uh, album tour, I believe I'm going down, and we were in uh, Chicago, and uh, Chicago Music Exchange had another instrument I was looking at, and then off the cuff I asked, do you have any, you know, Longhorn basses, Jerry Jones in particular, and they, they did, it wasn't set up, but they uh, sold it to me anyway, and our guitar tech, DB, uh, did a great job setting it up, and um, been obsessed with NRBQ as of late, so I try to channel those vibes. But yeah, this is uh, a fun instrument to play. Um, we're also touring with my uh, late 70s Fender Precision, which is my favorite bass. But uh, I don't know, lately this is uh, giving it a run for its cool money. Second. 
And for before we move on to your amps, what uh, strings and gauge or brands of strings and gauges you're using for the guitars and bass? Um, I use tens on uh, the electric guitars. I use Ernie Ball Slinkies. I like them. I never break them. Um, and on the uh, Longhorn, I think it's a hundred or one hundred five to forty five. It's surprising okay. the Jerry Jones can you know you can put some thicker strings in uh, the neck um, holds up and it sounds huge. Are they rounds or flats? Uh, I have uh, rounds on it now okay. just to balance the tone between the precision uh, and this because Rob and I switch uh, back and forth a lot and uh, might add that uh, we uh, have been longtime fans of original fuzz uh, straps. We okay. met them in Florida but now they're based out of Nashville and uh, it, it sort of seals the deal. <laughs> Super comfortable and uh, pretty groovy. And uh, amps, talk to us about those right behind you. Uh, I play through a uh, Fender Bassman right now. Um, it's something that uh, I, I gutted and rebuilt from scratch. Wow. Um, it's uh, a 5F6A circuit. I just did it all, um, hand wired it on an eyelet board like Fender would have done in the 50s. Dang. Was it something that the amp was not functioning and you're just like, I'm going to fix it? Or is you're like, hey, I want to do this uh, myself? I bought off a of Craigslist and um, in between tours I just kind of got bored and uh, just <laughs> decided to go for it and see what happened. It sounds great and um, I think I have Wing C 6L6s and uh, Tung Sol uh, 12AX7s in there. Perfect. And for the bass, are you probably, you're jumping over to... Yeah, for the bass I um, plug into this tuner, I don't use any effects and it goes into this uh, radial DI which uh, connects to the SVT um, situation over at Rob's side of the stage and I just get it uh, pumped really loud in through my uh, monitor world uh, thanks to Tyler. Perfect. Well, it's that time where we talk about pedals, so let's do that. All right, Jesse, pedal time. Talk to me about your stomp boxes. Um, well, the beginning of the chain, I have an exotic SP compressor that I really like a lot. It's a, a Dynacomp style compressor, but shrunken and simplified and it makes the telly sound real big and fat. Okay. I enjoy it, um, especially on um, the song Waking on a Pretty Day. Okay. And it also helps me um, use the bass micro synth uh, further down the line. Uh, it tracks exceptionally well when I have the compressor on. Next is the Hot Cake, which is a new pedal I picked up on our um, tour of Australia and New Zealand. Actually, uh, Mr. Crowther himself delivered it to oh, me. Wow. I had a a little inside connection there and um, he sold me a copy and gave me some tips and, and talked uh, shop a bit. It was really nice to meet him. It's great. It sounds great. I use it as a very light overdrive and kind of a boost. Okay. Uh, and the presence knob cranked so it gives it a, you know, a nice sparkle and a nice bright uh, sound. Uh, the next pedal is the uh, turbo face. Uh, as you uh, alluded to, uh, I make pedals not so much these days because i'm too busy touring but uh it's a uh, silicon fuzz face clone uh, a bc 108 is uh in one of the positions as far as the transistors go the other gotcha. one is a trade secret <laughs> it sounds awesome it's huge it's dark i made it pretty much stock but it cleans up well and um i, I enjoy it i um used to have a big muff that i'd built um forever and uh I know I like the attack and the uh, rawness of the uh, fuzz face. Uh, would you say that, I know that right now currently you're using just two single coil guitars, but would you say it's equally applicable to two humbucker Sue? Uh, you know, I don't know. I've never really tried it. Um, okay. I, I, like, uh, I like a lot of treble. Maybe it's because I'm deaf. And <laughs> <laughs> it speaks to me, but uh, I'm sure it sounds great on everything. Yeah. Um, I hope anyway. What are you using it on? When do you kick that bad boy on? Hunchback. Okay. Um, you know, and I've used the volume control on my guitar to clean it up, you know, and then when I really want to go over the top, just let the volume, you know, full tilt on gotcha. the guitar, and it's pretty wooly. Uh, that goes into the bass micro synth, which I use for these swelling effects on a part of Hunchback. There were a lot of, I think, keyboards on that part, and to a really make it happen live, I thought it'd be cool to, you know, try, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some guitar textures and it, it uh, works well for that. Um, uh, that then goes into the Moog MF Trem, which is my favorite Trem. I don't have a Trem 
on, the on my amp. Um, so this does a great approximation um, to the fender trim if you set the shape knob to uh, the 12 o'clock position. But I'm mostly using it these days all the way cranked to the right, which does a good uh, approximation of uh, a Vox repeat percussion uh, unit, which I have built in the past, but have given uh, to a dear friend who records bands up in New York, Ted Young. He's done some recording with us. Um, that follows into the MF flange, which is one of my favorite flange mm -hmm. pedals. If I only had two or three pedals, I'd have to have a flanger. Um, I don't know why people seem to, you know, hate them or scoff, <laughs> but I, I, I always use them. No, and, flanger's um, a good time. And uh, this one uh, sounds especially great to me, and it's really uh, flexible. You can get a lot of... Uh, a lot of tones from from that piece. And what you using the flange on? I, I use it for like chorusy type sounds. Um, you know, we try to mix up the set a lot. Uh, a song "Monkey," for instance, I would use it. But I also like it for dramatic uh, effects. I'll set it very um, deep and slow. Okay. And I really like that slow sound. It's a combing sound, and with uh, the micro synth, a little delay and some fuzz, it. Um, creates this over-the-top dramatic thing like at the end of a song like Waking on a Pretty Day or gotcha. something like that. And uh, then it goes into the Turbo Vibe, which is uh, the Univibe um, I built. Um, it's based on a project by this guy R.G. Keen and uh, was supported through Aaron Nelson's Stompbox forum on the internet. And it, it's a real Univibe, but just with a modern power supply. And uh, it, it sounds incredible to me. I can't believe it worked after I, I built it. And um, it's another pedal that uh, I'd probably have a hard time leaving behind. Yeah. And I use that on Waken, and I, I, I tend to use it uh, probably, uh, you know, on everything. Uh, <laughs> just sneak, find a way to sneak it in. Right. And uh, I have this box of rocks after that because the Univibe it sounds good with fuzz or uh, OD in front of it, but then it also sounds really great with an overdrive after it. Mm -hmm. So that's there, and I usually have it set a little... Uh, hotter and uh, thicker than the hot cake and of course I use this boost a lot um, to just cut through in certain uh, you know sections of tunes and um, goes into my volume pedal um, which you know while I tune I can use as a kill switch or I can have all this stuff running and then use it to do um, swells into a delay pedal and uh, currently I'm using the uh, Disaster Transport by Earthquaker Devices. Um, I had a uh, Deluxe Memory Man forever. It was mm -hmm. my favorite, and um, I broke the jack on it. Ooh. And um, That seems like a thing that you could fix real easily. Yeah, I, I just don't have that particular style of jack. Uh -huh. And um, uh, Chris, our sound man, tried to um, get me to check it out, and I love it so far. It's played a couple shows with it, and it's really working out. Cool. Um, it has the modulation. Um, effect to the echoes which gives you that tape echo kind of sound. sound and uh, I always leave that on and um, yeah it's great and um, uh, the tuner goes into the uh, tuner uh, uh, jack of the volume pedals so it's always on and I can always see how out of tune I am <laughs> And what's the expression pedal you're controlling that um, with? Well, you know, I go back and forth. Right now it's on the trim. Okay. Uh, I can, at the heel down, get really slow. And then, you know, in this position, it gets a nice choppy clip. It's pretty fun. But I've also used it to affect that dramatic um, uh, flanger um, uh, thing that I was talking about earlier, it uh, controls the rate. Oh, okay. And uh, so you can go from like a nice chorusy, swirling sound to like a real slow, deep, deep, you know, comb uh, <laughs> type effect. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. So I, the Moog pedals are great in that regard that they uh, have expression uh, capabilities, and uh, I'm just sort of toying around with that, you know, on a whim, show to show basis. However you're feeling, you'll plug it in, and that's... Yeah, m maybe the trim one night, maybe the flange, you know. Looks like we're going to get the trim tonight. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, Jesse, thank you very much for the time. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right, everyone, we're here with Kurt. Kurt, how are you doing today? Good. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, sir. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us about your gear, running down your rig. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, go. I stole your line. Hit me. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> talk to me about your 64 Jag. How do you know it was a 64? Because I have my friend Charles Softly. Okay, well, 
He's an insider. This is, uh, I actually got this here in uh, Nashville at Groon's a long time ago. I want to say 2011. Um, yeah, it's a 64 Fender Jaguar. And the Sunburst, what are the, the less rare, but they look way better. And I, you can see I beat it up pretty good. But uh, this has been pretty uh, faithful. Like songs like KV Crimes and others. Have, and pretty much all my other songs that I play electric, I use this guitar. And uh, yeah. Do you keep, because I believe you have a second one? You yeah, keep that one? so that's what happened. And then, you know how Jaguars are, they're finicky. I actually, I just got a mastery bridge put in. Ooh. I finally joined the club there, but like, so my whole band, everybody was. Are you a believer? Uh, now, for sure, because yeah. it would just be popping out and then you put a buzz stop on there and that makes a tone, no offense to buzz stop, but it makes the tone pretty neutered you could say neutered <laughs> yes. and um and so yeah so so i got i got heavy back into it making this next record and i thought that i should just get an identical 64 fender jaguar and then that way if i wanted i could just jam jaguar throughout the set i have a lot of different tunings you know mm -hmm. and so and but that proved a little weird too you know you can't just have jaguar but m maybe now with the masteries it really does because basically, uh, what was happening was my it was metal was the string was hitting metal twice, you know, like mm -hmm. whatever. I can't explain it, but others could. But uh, now it's just like kind of pure string tone, and and you can really bend it, and it doesn't go out of tune. How long uh, have you been using the mastery now? Uh, one one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day. And you use one's always in standard tuning, I believe, and then the other ones kind of rotating through your well mirage. I've got a lot of tunings and I on this record even and I started you know I also use half down tuning mm -hmm. like um waking on a pretty day is half down tuning um which is on this acoustic which we'll get to okay uh and then yeah songs like dust bunnies that's in half down so you got heavier gauge strings on the one the one jag for that and then uh sometimes I do it in half half up basically standard but a step up and or standard, yeah, all kinds of things, really. All okay. kinds of things. And what's the difference in the gauges of the strings? Uh, well, this is, j I use 11s usually. Okay. And then, so I got just a heavy gauge. DB, you know, DB! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those we just now actually put the regular it, sling key, not the regular sling key. It's like kind of light. I mean, it's, it's like 11s here, but then heavy oh, here. Top he okay. For a while they were all heavy, but then the G was just really weird. Okay. Just too heavy. Gotcha. Oh, regular slinky? That's what, what you're using usually is power slinky. Yeah. Oh, okay. And we got the not even slinky. Okay. Not even. Not even slinky at all. <laughs> and this kind is called not even slinky in the slightest. So, uh, and this is another Fender uh, electric guitar. It's, that's, so uh, it's white. It's got a matching headstock. It's made to seem like a 1965 Fender Jazzmaster, which is my first Jazzmaster uh, I just got hooked up by Fender with this and I'm really stoked. Uh, it's got the mastery already on it? It Well, no, we put a, ma we oh, put we put a mastery it? Okay. on it yesterday. Um, but yeah, I, it, this is new to me, but I'll tell you, I, I love to even just sit down with it, not even plugged in and just play this thing. I, I wrote a bunch of songs on this, so. Uh, but, but, you know, also very importantly, it looks really cool. I mean, well, f the sound, I've, it takes me a little while to figure out the sound of, of anything. But uh, it's got to look good for starts. You know? <laughs> Who cares about what it sounds but it, like? But it does sound good. But uh, I'm still working. You know, I've been doing the Jaguar for so long that it, you know, it's, it sounds great on Freak Train, though. I use this on Freak Train. Uh, but yeah, brand new guitar made to, it's like made exactly like a uh, 65 Jazz Master. And this, I copied this off of Kyle. Uh, but I wasn't sued like Greco was uh, at one time, but this, this is basically was, a Les Paul copy. Was this one of the first guitars you got, or is this a different Greco? This is, no, I got this, I copied off of my friend uh, who happens to be in my band, um, whose name is Kyle. Uh, but, and then I put a Bigsby on there, or when I say I, I mean Jesse. And, um, Did you at least come up with the idea? What for the big, the big Z? Z? Yeah. Well, yeah, because I was listening one day on uh, the Fourth of July with my dad to uh, 
to Neil Young and Crazy Horse. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of this album, Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm familiar. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The Bigsby was sounding really good one day. And uh, we, we had a group texting meeting with the band and I was talking about how I, want, I wanted a Bigsby on the Greco. And they all said that'd be a cool idea. And then I, at first I was like, I hate it. And now I, I just kept it on, I like it. <laughs> um, and this I just got. Ooh. Jesse has one of these as well, but he never takes it out, and it fell into my lap from Chicago Music. It's a 1965 or 66 Fender 12 Candy Apple Red. It's a uh, it was ra it's pretty rare, and um, I think pretty expensive usually, but I got a sweet deal. So it ch it chimes, it plays itself really, but What's we just brought it on the road. What song are you playing this one on? Uh, these, right now I'm playing Jesus Fever, but the reason I brought it is because I've been writing a lot of songs on it lately, and so hopefully between sound, in sound checks I'll start chiming those, but uh, uh, at the moment it's just Jesus Fever. Gotcha. Yeah. And before we go any further, I know you're going to talk to us about the acoustic, but you got all these beautiful straps. Yes, yes, I meant to mention that. These are um, original fuzz uh, straps, they're hand wound. Sometimes in America, sometimes in Peru, but I, I met these guys in Florida uh, where they resided then, but now they live here in Nashville and they just showed up and restocked us. But this one here, uh, you know, a couple years ago, they, they came up to me and th this is actually my signature model. Uh, so it's a Kurt Vile strap. So I put them on both of my oh. identical 64 Jaguars. Um, great, great traps. All of them have one, as you see. And the acoustic is a Martin. Yeah, the acoustic is a Martin. And a uh, funny story about this guitar, I can't remember the exact model, but it's a Dreadnought. OK, it's a DC-16 RGTE. And uh, basically, I have a friend, Michael Johnson. I used to always borrow his. And then one day, I was really tired on tour. And uh, somehow, in a snowstorm, it was stolen or something from a hotel room, so I had to buy. I had to buy two identical ones, one for me and one for him. Uh, but I got half off, you know, from Martin, so it was like buying one. Uh, so this was. Uh, I used this on Waking on a Pretty Day. I, I I composed most of Smoke Ring for my Halo on this guitar. This is my first nice Martin acoustic, basically. And this is also the one if I want to shred, as if it's an electric guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm playing this big one usually because. I'll play solo segments and usually use that small Martin over there. That, um, but, but this is the one if you want to really dig in and put fuzz on and wah pedal, you know, just pre treat it like an electric. And it, it, it works out because you have it going through an amp, but also a direct signal. Okay. So if it sounds too crazy, ideally, if the sound man's doing his job, he can mix in the uh -huh. clean sick sound, sound with that. Uh, yeah. And. Yeah, so this, I actually have two of these custom, Martin custom guitars from, uh, in Philadelphia, uh, Vintage Instruments, mm -hmm. uh, they have all kinds of beautiful old acoustics, but then they have these custom jobs they do with uh, Martin where they design it, and, you know, a combination of all their favorite vintage guitars, and they're just so well made. And that's a double O body style? This is a double O. Okay. And I, I can't, this is harder to take off because it's a small, smaller hole, so I can't tell you the exact model, but they, they've custom made these. And the guy that works there, it's a, it's a couple, a married couple, but the guy, he, he's often on that Antique Road show. Oh, okay, yeah. Antique Rodeo or something <laughs> uh, show, and he's like appraising guitars. But anyway, they have another one, which I got first, which is like a Philadelphia Folk Festival anniversary edition and um, that was the sound of the recording of Waking on a Pretty Day and a, a lot of my recordings and I used this guitar on a lot of the, the new record, the acoustic jams. Yep. And then, are you guys just guitar or do you care about this banjo over here? Oh, we care about the banjo. All right. Well, first off, I should say... <clears throat> you started on banjo. Correct? Yeah, I started on banjo. First off, I should say... Um, uh, I got heavy back into the banjo, and there's a company, Buckeye Banjos, which was, uh, I'm an outlaw, another, I, this guy makes amazing handcrafted banjos, my friend Nathan Bowles plays them, 
and uh, he plays in Steve Gunn's band, but they, they're incredibly well-made, handcrafted instruments. And as you see, this is a gold tone, so that's, this isn't that. But the thing is, I play gold tone. Resonator. With the, yeah, it, need, it needed a closed back and it needed, that one's just so nice, it doesn't really hold up when I have the whole band and it's oh, loud, okay. so I haven't been able, I'll bring that out again eventually, but it really changed my life, that, that, uh, that Buckeye banjo. Wow, but, so it got but, you back into it? Yeah, say? well, I was always into it. I had my the same banjo from when I was 14, and uh -huh. I, I'd pick it up, but it would definitely go out of tune easily. So then I got this Buckeye banjo, and it really got me back in the swing. And then, you know, Gold Tone, thanks to them for giving me a deal on this. They, they rushed me. They rushed me one in the beginning of my tour. You know, on the cover of my new album, Believe I'm Going Down, I have a, uh, a Gold Tone resonator yep. as well. So, so, you know, I'm helping them out. They're helping me out. It's a love fest. Yeah. And this, I guess I'll show you this even though I haven't been using it lately at all. But it, it's got a good look. This is just a 66 Fender Mustang. These are actually sort of known as children's guitars. They're like, I think back in the day they were just like for kids to learn how to yeah, play guitar. Yeah, they, stuff. They definitely look cool. I'll bring it back in the mix. I've been, basically we, we've been sm sm DB my my uh, guitar tech over there he he's been going from like all all over the fretboard with the tuning so the idea was to bring more guitars out because we're having trouble keeping all the guitars in tune a lot of it was the mastery i think but i think also going from half down to half up to open g to you know open xyz then you know can't always keep them in tune so more guitars are good and i wanted to ask because i'm a big fan of the the song Gold Tone, I know that you use that resonator that you said that's on the cover. How, if you guys play that live, how do, you, how do you cover that since obviously that has a particular sound? How are you guys doing that? Well, or maybe you don't. The song Gold Tone actually, it was definitely inspired by I had just gotten that resonator, but it's not on the recording, but that Gold Tone resonator is on um, All in a Day's Work on okay. the new record. But uh, yeah, to do Gold Tone live, I would like to get a I, it's it's tricky with the pickup on a resonator. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't have yet to get one that doesn't just sound like a metallic feedback. But I only tried one. Uh, maybe it was the wrong pickup. Seems like it. But uh, uh, yeah. But anyway, I, I actually play gold tone with, with electric guitar these oh, days. Oh okay. Yeah. And before we move on to amps and pedals, uh, would you tell us any of your tunings that you know? That I know that you said you're going half up, half down. And yeah, going G. half up, half down. Uh, you know, just like. Uh, well, I say I I kind of had like semi unique tunings and like uh, but it, you know on on I, I used like a classic dad gad tuning on okay. that song that's life. All right, let's talk about your amps, which are over there. Yeah, over here. Kurt, we're over here at your amps. Talk to us about those, sir. Okay, so I've got I've got pretty much every kind of amp under the sun, and I'm I'm uh, I'm kind of repelled by technology and electricity, and then. So, one I always go back to is this just a 65 Deluxe reissue. Whenever I'm having trouble with an amp, I'll just go back to that and it's like, oh, that's my sound. So I had this for the longest. I got this on tour. I was touring with that band, The Soft Pack, and mm. uh, they knew a guy at Fender and all my amps were blowing up as usual because they were cheap or, or just old and rusty inside. Uh, so that's the beauty, I guess, of a getting something new obviously vintage is awesome but uh it seems like you gotta keep fixing them so this is a deluxe uh reissue I, i'll play mainly electric these days through them but i used to play both acoustic and electric okay um you know and, and down here this is actually jesse's amp uh but in europe or some, we discovered that the acoustic was sounding pretty good you wouldn't think but through this Vox AC30. Maybe we were trying to do it the other way around, but it's. And over here, you got this little EQ thing. My my little my little acu uh, acoustic feeds back in a different way. So you go between channels and you switch this on for the gotcha. little guy. Um, and then this just for a different electric sound. You got the Fender Bass Man. Uh, I have a '67, uh, but I think that's Rob's. You can tell by the dinosaurs on it. <laughs> um, his is, uh, I don't know, 66, 67, either one, I don't know. Uh, 
My I, choice. Are you using both of them at the same time, or is that something either or? Uh, I, I do either or. I don't play them at the same time gotcha. these days. What makes you decide between using the deluxe or using the basement? Uh, I always come in acting like I want some kind of structure, you know, before <laughs> between tours. I'm like, I've got to figure this out. But it always tends to be sort of an ADD approach of uh, whatever I feel like <laughs> whatever stomping on in the moment, you know, whatever sounds good at the time. Yeah. Perfect. Well, speaking of stomping, let's talk about your pedals. Okay. All right. This is, uh, here's my rundown rig. Uh, one day I'll graduate to a Bradshaw if I ever know what I, if I ever decide what I want or can focus for one second. But <laughs> what tends to happen is there's a lot of good pedals in here, or a few, and there's uh, also a lot of cheap, crappy pedals in here. And then I try to up it, you know, I should get rid of this and that, you know, to have more quality but I'm just so used to the ones I have that it's easier said than done. So, but uh, I guess importantly, this, this is like an old, it's recased by Jesse, but it's uh, one of those old uh, Sovtech green uh, oh, okay. big muffs. And it's hard to go back from there. I actually used it on electric and acoustic and it poses problems because they're both very different frequencies. Yeah. So like, uh, we got, I guess I gotta get another one or something. <laughs> um, Are you having to change the knobs at all when you switch yeah, between Yeah, that's what two? I mean, I yeah. do, and you just never, you just never know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Um, but it surely sounds good with this Crybaby wah pedal um, over there. Uh, this is, it's sort of like a, or maybe exactly like an Ibanez tube screamer and this is an original Ibanez analog chorus, uh, neither of which I, I ever thought I'd use, but I, I, I found this like kind of a effects processor analog. It was like an Ibanez, basically it was an Ibanez uh, two of what I just said, mm -hmm. and also a compressor. And uh, it was like in this little gold thing, and I, I got really used to that sound. I would put it on the end here, but it just had like a two prong plug, and you take it overseas, there'd be all these problems. So that's how they came into the play. I use them, all like KV Crimes, the Tube Screamer, and play some leads on the Ibanez uh, chorus for Waken. And so all those pedals are fine. You got the Moog Phaser here, which I used on the recording of Waken on a Pretty Day. I used it all over Waken on a Pretty Day, Day's record. That was my favorite pedal around then. I still like mm -hmm. it, but um, I don't hit it all the time. Just when I want like a jet engine to go by. <laughs> um, and two pedals I use a lot are definitely by far my cheapest ones. And uh, you got the Green Line 6 for delay and looping and you got the purple filter pedal. They sound worse all the time, but then I just have to go back to them. Uh, they really do break all the time. Uh, hopefully they'll give me an endor endorsement because uh, cause I, I don't know, I think I run their company by now. Uh, how often I buy them. <laughs> they look pretty clean, so they must be new ones. Yeah, they're new. So, uh, everybody, just tr tr try them out, everybody. Um, and here is a, uh, I use this all the, uh, all the time too. It's a turbo booster. Um, basically, you see we got all these different boosters here. The Boxer Rock is my newest booster. Uh, a lot of people use these. Mick Turner from Dirty Three, I, I saw he used them. I've been, I've been jammed with him. Uh, Jay Mascus has and one. And Jay Mascus, that's yeah. why I got one because I d they had that like anniversary show and I jammed with them. And all he had was a, he gave me a box of rock and an MXR cop carbon copy and I was playing through this uh, high watt bulldog amp and it sounded awesome and I, I've since tried to buy even one of those amps and of, of course it showed up in a million pieces. <laughs> uh, so I'm sure it was packed well. <laughs> and um, yeah, but anyway, this booster here is a Jesse booster and it's just a clean boost and it sounds great. Um, and over here you just got a vibrato pedal. I'm into vibrato. And um, it's going through this here voodoo lounge, this here voodoo lounge switch. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, one day I'll up to a Bradshaw or something, but uh, this, you know, you got the bass man, banjo, acoustic, other electric uh, selector thing. 
And then here's my loop I got going right now on a loop station. That's, uh, that's beautiful, isn't it? That's a uh, wheelhouse. Two loops at once. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, I don't even have to come to the concert tonight. There it is. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool loop too. That's that's my uh, Yamaha CS60. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> that's it. I think I dialed the wrong number. What? I said, I think I dialed the wrong number. That's what it reminds me of yeah. the dial tone. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful dial tone, though. Yes. <laughs> That's it, I think. That's it. Well, yeah. Kurt, I appreciate you taking the time before the show. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Another regret down here in Nashville. This is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. Yeah. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.